Hello, uh, my name is Richard Curtis, and this is apparently my career in four minutes. Tim. My dear son, this is going to sound strange, but there's this secret that the men in this family can travel in time. Wow. I mean, I think, if anything, the secret of uh, my films has been that I've still tried to keep writing sketches in many of them. If you look at Four Weddings, it's, it's in a funny way a sketch movie, really. This, these two jokes at this wedding, these two jokes at the next wedding. And um, if you look at Notting Hill, the scene when we're in the junket where he's being interviewed, that's like a sketch about somebody misunderstanding a film or not having seen a film. So I think the sketch writing definitely informed and was crucial to the movie career. I think the magic of sitcom is probably still writing sketches in sitcom, but the plot structure of sitcom, which is so crucial, I don't think resembles the structure of movies very much. So I think this, it's, it's harder to see the line between the sitcoms and the films. The Tall Guy was a very happy film. Um, Jeff Goldblum, very funny man, and I particularly remember just roaring with laughter in a scene where Rowan was having a party when he'd sacked Jeff Goldblum and he, um, for the party, he just bought a mini bottle of champagne because at the end of my tour with Rowan, we did 72 dates and Rowan had a party and he bought one bottle of champagne and one pizza. Not one pizza for all of us, one pizza. Um, so uh, I remember having a very good time on that film. The success of Four Winners and Funeral was a complete surprise to everybody. I've got a piece of paper from uh, MGM or whoever owned the movie, a polygram who owned the movie, and next to America on the expected earnings it said naught. Uh, so um, it was a great shock to everybody. Well, the strange thing was I remember thinking of the plot of Notting Hill on a very wet afternoon sitting in a, in a waiting room with Corin Redgrave who played Andy McDowell's husband and James Fleet on Four Weddings. So I actually thought of Notting Hill while we were making Four Weddings. So it was lucky for me that, it, that coming out of the success of Four Weddings, I already knew what I was gonna do rather than thinking, oh God, what's next? And the thing about Love Actually is it was a curious film because everybody was only on it for a week or for two weeks so that nobody could see quite how bad I was at directing because just when they were thinking, oh my God, really? He doesn't know what he's doing, they were off. Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was, it was nerve-wracking, but it was like I could start 12 times, you know, every time we got a new bunch I would be a little bit better. One of the reasons I wrote that film is because there's a whole chunk of movies, particularly the um, Robert Altman ones, but I love Nashville, there's a movie called Smoke that I love, they love Pulp Fiction, so there were a lot of, of multi story for shortcuts. Uh, it was a genre I loved. The strange thing about the cast of um, The Boat That Rocked is they were almost all in every single scene. So that was when I started directing just with the camera on people's shoulders so that instead of saying a single of him, a single of him, a single of him, the camera could just go like that and find whoever was talking. I think what I learned was a sort of negative lesson which is that I didn't like the formal structures of movie making. I did not like doing the wide shot followed by a two shot followed by because you just get locked in at the beginning of the day into one performance and one geography. So I think that I, um, in this, um, in The Boat That Rot and Now and About Time, the camera's very fluid and flexible and just waiting to catch good things rather than, you know, being part of a very sort of formal shooting structure. Working on War Horse with Steven Spielberg was an absolute joy because Steven is a sort of, he really is a storytelling genius. So you would come up with a scene and he would say, well, that sounds great, how about this? And suddenly he would imagine 10 minutes of cinema that you could completely see. And if you said, well, I'm not sure that's right because this character wouldn't do that, He'd imagine another whole 10 minutes of cinema. I mean, he was fantastic. It was like someone who could go on writing brilliant tunes one after another. Well, it's funny, I have already written two time travel things. So there was time travel in a Blackout a special that we did. And I did a Doctor Who, which was about time traveling back to Vincent van Gogh. So uh, I obviously am interested in it. Um, I, don't, I, mean, I, haven't, I didn't research time travel movies before I made my one. I didn't go back and watch Crowd. I mean, at the moment, I'm not intending to direct something again. At the moment, the message of About Time is, is, is do, stress, do less stressful things and enjoy yourself. And so the next time I work with Bill, I hope we'll be working on a, a walking holiday rather than a movie. <laughs> Although it's not as dramatic as it sounds. You can't kill Hitler or shag Helen of Troy, unfortunately.